This place is cursed. <laughs> Levan Saganishvili is almost undoubtedly the strongest arm wrestler to have ever lived. His feats of strength, both on and off the table, are some of the craziest things we have seen in the sport, and very few, if any, arm wrestlers even come close to displaying his level of power. Levan reigned supreme as the undisputed number one in the super heavyweight division from 2019 when he defeated Vitaly Lolatin, up until recently in 2024 when he was controversially taken off the rankings due to inactivity for over a year due to an injury to his right wrist. <coughs> Despite that, many still believe him to be the number one guy right now. But his dominance was a relatively recent phenomenon. Levan has always been a really good arm wrestler, with him and his teammate Gennady Kvitvinia being frequent faces in the finals of the WAF European and World Championships open weight division. And interestingly enough, both of them were the only people who have defeated Devin Larratt on the right hand in recent years. However, he was never really the guy who was clearly much, much stronger than everyone else. He's been beaten by guys like Sabin Barulescu, Krasimir Kostadinov, even by his own teammate Gennady. They've gone back and forth with each other over the years several times. And herein lies the point of analysis for what I refer to as Saganish Philly's elbow. elbow. From 2019 to 2022, Levan was seen as practically invincible. He went through every opponent thrown at him without much difficulty at all. Much of this could have been attributed to his center table dominance. Except for his first rounds against Vitaly Lalatin and Dmitry Trubin, Levan has never really had much problem beating an opponent, especially after he has taken center table. But at King of the Table 4, in round 1 against Devon Laird, a seed of doubt was planted into people's minds at this moment. But of course, this was just a fleeting moment, and over the next few rounds, Levon went back to establishing why he was number one. But even still, this got many people, including myself, speculating on how, if possible, Levon could be stopped or even beaten. The next title defense match that Levan had was against none other than the gladiator, Hermes Gasparini. Hermes had been on a tear over the past two years leading up to this, beating out guys like Gennady, Arif Artem, and Dave Chafee. Now, Hermes, like Levan, is primarily a top role puller. The top role is for the smart people. <laughs> No, it's not for everybody. And in this top roll vs top roll battle, most people were heavily favoring Levan. But we have evidence that there are indeed chinks in his armor, or at least one weakness. And once we take a step back and look at most of the times that he had been slowed down or even lost in the past, it becomes quite obvious exactly what this weakness is. Levan has a weakness in his elbow. When he goes up against someone with strong enough side pressure to withstand his initial surges, and elbow integrity to use their frame to hold off his attacks, Levan's weakness in his side pressure driven through the elbow prevents him from finishing these types of opponents. As a top roller who also suffers from such a weakness now and also in the past, I found that it is extremely important to develop some form of inside game or a press to be able to transition and pin the opponent when you find yourself in such a situation. And unfortunately for Levan, even after all these years, he has not developed an effective press, with the only time he successfully pulled it off being in 2018, but even then, there were a lot of questionable moments where his shoulder almost crossed the center line. 
while he has shown that he can somewhat pull in a hook, his strength through the elbow is still not enough in the cases that we've seen so far to be able to finish the opponent. And after round one against Hermes Gasparini, the world saw this glaring weakness being highlighted once more. And as for why I call this Saganishvili's elbow, well, it's because we saw the exact same thing happen to Bacho Saganishvili in his match against Rio Masik. Thankfully for Levan, his outcome against Ormes was still successful, but that veil of invincibility, that was no more. But I'd like to take this chance to talk a little bit more in detail about why you need to develop your elbow strength and inside game as a top roller. Now, obviously, it's so that you can pin your opponent, but how does it help? Now, I want to use the example of the situation that Levan and Bacho were both in as I think it most easily illustrates my points. But I want to say that the advice I will give later on in the video is applicable even if it's not in this very specific situation. To put it simply, there are two things working against you as a top roller in this situation. Number one, even though you have taken the opponent's wrist, if they continue to press through with a flopped wrist and you continue to try and pronate, you will start to become over pronated and your resulting elbow flexion strength will drop. Most of us know that when we become fully supinated, our biceps become isolated and our elbow flexion ability becomes greatly reduced. Which is why we're always told to protect our pronator and prevent ourselves from getting turned palm up. However, what is not as commonly realized is that this protect your pronation rule only works up till a certain point. If you become over pronated, then this starts to work against you. Think about it. Can you really reverse curl more than you can hammer a bicep curl? Elbow flexion is strongest when you're not fully pronated. The second point is that in such a position, you are now using your muscles to work against your opponent's frame. And as I've mentioned in a previous video before, using your frame is a way more efficient way to arm wrestle compared to using just your muscles. But in order to use your frame, you need to have the connective tissue that is strong enough to support that. To be able to finish an opponent off when you can't already beat them after you've taken their wrist, the best thing to do is to come back up and transition into a press using your own frame against them. But if you don't have the proper elbow conditioning, you won't be able to do so. Or worst case, you will get injured like I did. One of the best exercises for elbow conditioning was popularized in the arm wrestling community by Todd Hutchings, and that is the JM Press. And for those of you who have weak elbows, Go ahead and try it, even with just a bar. If you've never conditioned your elbows before, it's gonna feel like hell. I know personally, for my first couple of times doing it, my elbows hurt just trying with the bar itself. But after training my elbows for some time, I noticed a better ability to drive with side pressure, and it even allowed me to somewhat use a transitioned press on several occasions, to some degree of success. And even when I didn't directly need to use an inside move, just having that added strength and stability overall, I found, improved my top roll significantly. Now with Levan's match with Devin coming up in just a couple of weeks, who knows if Levan has improved on this aspect of his arm wrestling game or not. But if he hasn't, and Devin is able to get his stop, it's gonna be a long day ahead. But hey, I'm sure everyone is super excited for East vs West 12. I know I am. How do you think this match is gonna pan out? Do you think Levan has eliminated his one weakness or do you think he's just ignored it and just tried to get stronger like he has before? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. I'm Greg and I'll see you in the next one.